Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at some pre-built collectors in the Java Stream API. Specifically, we're going to look at two list, two set, two collection, two map, and partitioning by. So this whole topic of collectors gets a little bit complicated, especially when we look at grouping by. I think it's one of those things that you can be really baffled by and then if you keep kind of investigating it and practicing it, you sort of suddenly get it and it all becomes clear. So I've been trying to think about the best way to present this to make it seem as straightforward and logical as possible. And I think we can break it down initially into three videos. I might change my mind. But in this video, we're going to look at these simple functions here, which are pretty straightforward. In the next video, we're going to look at some ready-made collector functions that are kind of collector equivalents of things we've already seen, equivalents of things like map and filter and so on. And then in the video after that, we're going to take a look at grouping by, which is where it really gets interesting and a little bit more complicated. Now, the first thing that we really need here is the API document that deals with collectors. If we go to Google and I search for Java collectors, then by default, we get the Java 8 version. And really, I want something more up to date than that. So I'm going to just change this 8 in the URL to 16. And then let's click on API here. Maybe I could search for it up there. But I'm going to go to Java base. And let's scroll down here and go to Java util stream. And then finally, I think if we go down here, we can go to not collector, but collectors here. And now we've got the API uh, Java 16 version of collectors, which I'm sure there's got to be an easier way to get to this, but it didn't seem too easy uh, when I've tried it, quite honestly. So the functions that we're dealing with in this and the next few videos are these. We've already seen how to build our own collectors. We've seen it's a pretty involved procedure, but fortunately we've got all these ready-made ones which we can use. And in this video, we're just going to get started with some of the simplest ones. So remember, what we're basically talking about here are mutable reduction operations, typically mutable, where we add all the elements in a stream into some kind of collection, like a set or whatever. But as we'll see, you can do some really quite complicated stuff with these functions. So let's go to Eclipse here and take a look at this. The first thing that we need is a stream. Let's use int stream again, and I'm just going to use a range. Let's maybe say from 0 to 10 or something. And to get a stream of objects rather than a primitive int stream, I'm going to use the boxed method. And then finally, we're going to be using collect, and we're going to do various things with that. So I want to get the result. Let's say var result 1 equals all that stuff. And then I'm going to output the result down here somewhere. So output result one. And let's add the input for int stream. And then let's, to start with, use a function that we've already used, which is collectors.toList. So here I could type collectors.toList. And all this is going to do is, as we've seen previously, it's going to add all the elements in the stream into a list which will be returned and then we can actually view the list. To prove that it's actually a list, let's actually duplicate this line and we'll also do get class and get name. And if I run that, we can see that what we've got is actually an array list. Now a really common thing to do, which really confused me years ago when I first started looking at this, is rather than write collectors dot such and such over and over again, uh, very often people do static imports. So we can do an import static here, collectors dot star, and that's going to import all the methods that we see in this API doc. So we can use them without specifying collectors first, just like this. And often if you look at examples and documentation, you will see these collectors functions used in this form. And it can be frustrating because you don't always see this bit at the top being reproduced. 
and then you think, well, what on earth is this? Where is it coming from? And the answer is we're just dealing with functions, with methods of the collector's class here. Now let's take a look at two set, which is just as simple and straightforward. So I duplicate all that stuff. We'll have result two here, here, and here. And I'll try to just format it a bit more nicely. And we'll change that to two set. And exactly as you might imagine, you just get a hash set down here. We've also got the more generic form to collection. So if I copy all this and change this to result three, we can write to collection here. And now we can specify our own collection. So for example, suppose we want to put all the elements in the stream into a tree set. We could do tree set colon colon new and add the import for tree set. Unfortunately, in Eclipse, that's probably going to change my static import to different imports. So I might end up having to change at least one of them back to a star. So we've got access to all the methods there. Let's just run this. And we can see we've added all the elements to a tree set now. What about to map? Well, this lets us use all the elements in the stream as the keys in a map, except it's, it's a little bit more powerful than that. Let's take a look. I'm going to duplicate this and we'll have result four now. So if we specify here to map, we need to specify, of course, what we're going to use for the keys in the map and also what we're going to use for the values in the map. And we do both of those using functions. And one thing here that you should note is that you can't have duplicate keys in your map. If you want to somehow condense the different elements into different categories, then you need grouping by, which we're going to look at in a subsequent video. So first, let's, let's specify what key to use. Let's say we want to use the elements themselves as keys. So here we have to specify some kind of function that takes in each element and for each element produces the key that we're going to use. And if we actually don't want to change the elements, then we need what's called an identity function that just accepts each element and then returns exactly that element. And one way we could do that is by using function.identity. And let's say we also want to use the elements unchanged as the values in the map, then we can specify for the function that produces the values in the map, also function.identity. And if we take a look at what we've got now, we've actually got a map where the keys and the values are the elements. But of course, there's more flexibility here than we're actually using. So one thing to say is that if you don't want to type function.identity, it's precisely equivalent to writing i or whatever letter or variable name you like maps to i. So just a, a lambda expression like this, that's an identity function. It does the exact same thing as this. So for instance, maybe we want to use the elements as the keys in the map, but for the values in the map, we want to use three times the element. We could just do this, i arrow i times three. And then when we run that, we've got what you'd expect. We've got each element as a key in the map, and each value is just three times that element. And of course, you're not limited to doing this with integers. You, you can use it with strings, complicated objects of whatever type you like. And finally, let's take a look at partition by. This is just used in a case where you want to categorize the elements into two different categories. And it returns a map where the key type in the map is Boolean. So let's copy this and we're going to have result five. So let's write here partitioning by, and we'll make sure that we've got the static import for partitioning by here. And then what we need here is a function that just returns true or false for each element. So for example, supposing we want a map where we've got two keys, one's going to be true and the other's going to be false. That's what partitioning by does. And one of the keys will have for its value a list of all the odd numbers and the other one will have a list of all the even numbers. Let's then write i arrow i 
mod 2 equals 0. So we need something that returns true or false for each element. And this is going to return, of course, true for even numbers and false for odd numbers. So if we run it, we get a map with two keys, true and false. We're always going to get that with partitioning by. And then we've got lists containing the odd and even numbers. And there is a version of partitioning by where we can specify another collector so that we can collect the values in the map into whatever kind of structure we like. And this, uh, as well as group by, will actually enable you to create long chains of collectors if you want that do different things. But we're going to get onto that shortly, a video or two down the line. So as, as a simple example of that, we could write here to list and use the to list collector which is the default anyway. So actually, maybe let's use to set just to do something a little bit more interesting. And now the values in the map are actually going to be sets. So to prove that, let's actually do result 5.getTrue.getClass.getName. And if we output that, we should see that what we've got is now a set for the value in this map. So let's try this and see what it does. Oh yeah, but this should be true. Getting confused with Python there, I think. Okay, let's run it. And we've got a hash set because we specified to set there. So we're gonna leave it there for this particular video. This is just a really simple start to get us going with this stuff. It's gonna get more complicated pretty swiftly, but we're gonna see that these pre-made collectors are very powerful. So we'll leave it there for this video. This is just a really simple introduction to get us going with these different collectors. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at some of these functions like max by, min by, summing double, summing int, averaging int, counting. These are things that are basically collector equivalents of stream methods that we've already seen. So they work in much the same way, except they are collectors. And that's not going to seem very useful just yet. But when we then get on to looking at group by, you'll see why we need these collector forms of these different methods for doing things like counting, even though we've already got count, which we've seen previously. Don't forget, you can get lots of free courses if you register to my website for free, caverprogramming.com. And if you opt into the marketing messages, I'll send you like one message a month when I've got a course on sale. Please consider also liking and subscribing if you haven't already. And until next time, happy coding.